I don't know if you guys heard that. I'm about to film my intro out here on the river, anxiously awaiting sunrise. And there's salmon thrashing around down there right now. Out here, ready to float fish with skein. Maybe throw a little spinner. Finally, that time of year, guys, chasing king salmon on the river is Michigan's ultimate challenge, in my opinion, is landing one of these fish, uh, getting them to bite, first of all, and then landing them in a small river. It's one of the coolest things to do in Michigan, and I'm out here finally about to do it. Uh, we dream about it all year long, and the fish are just starting to run, just trickling in. So I am way down river right now at a spot. You know, just a couple bends before the river goes into Lake Michigan. Uh, one of those known early spots where the fish show up uh, fresh out of the lake and a bunch of boot prints right here below me. So people have been fishing it and I just heard a salmon thrash. So just going to try to be quiet here, uh, shut the light off, and hopefully when the sun comes up, able to get a bite on camera for you guys, get the first king salmon of the season. Super exciting times. About to rig up my skein. Got gloves here. Um, usually, you probably should wear gloves. This stuff's really hard in your hands, but I'm just, I just don't like wearing gloves. And um, another quick heads up is that I know one thing I see a ton on the river is gloves left on the river. So please, if you're gonna be skein fishermen, please don't leave your used gloves on the river bank. Not only is it just a terrible thing to do, but you're just giving away that you're fishing a good skein hole. You know, when I see gloves on the bank, which I do all the time, um, that just tells me, hey, I should fish here. <laughs> so, don't do that. This is the moment, and this is where it all goes bad. They run down into the wood and they break your heart. So many times it happens. Oh my gosh, he's so deep in there. That's so bad. There's so much wood in all these spots where these fish love to sit. And I've got 20 pound tests right now, so I can actually go toe to toe with them. Butter on fluorocarbon, that's just my confidence with 20 pound tests I feel like I can actually fight these fish fish not even that big We've got scary big kings this year, and this is not even one of them, but this is an awesome fish. And I will never complain about any king. We're gonna try to beach her, I think. I think beaching her is the way to go. She's done. Oh my goodness, guys, it's happened. King salmon on the bank, baby. All right, guys. Today's my lucky day. First king on the bank. And it's a solid fish. It's not a giant, but it's totally a solid fish. I would rather hook fish like this than hook some of the giants that we have. Because, I mean, what are your chances? This fish fought herself to the death. She's already looking dead here. You can see that skein hook up. Blood run skeena hook. Right there in the jaw. Oh man. I need to work out to prep for this season. Can barely let this girl. Man, I would seriously recommend conditioning if you're gonna king salmon fish a lot this year because I'm worn out from fighting her and lifting this fish. Oh my gosh. Beautiful fresh fish. I'm struggling. All right guys, just took my first salmon of the season which is an absolute thrill. Just one of the greatest feelings ever to just get the skunk off. And I'm out here fishing one of the perfect spots. If you're going to target early fish, uh, this is the kind of thing you should look for. Uh, you need wood and overhead cover. So this is an undercut bank here. Uh, they're going to be tucked into cover for sure. They're always extra spooky early on. So you need cover and wood. Um, you need cool water. 
Uh, this water is about 62 degrees, so definitely want water below 70, which can actually be tough to find this time of year. So uh, those are two things you want if you're chasing early salmon. And then of course you want to be close to the lake. You don't really want to be way upstream. Um, you want to hit those first fish that are arriving. Uh, and that usually means the closer to the lake, uh, the more fresh fish you're going to encounter. So that was a pretty fresh one. Uh, she fought like she was fresh. So I'm going to take maybe a five, 10 minute break and hopefully get another nice bobber down for you on video. All right guys, just broke off for the fourth or fifth time today. Um, I'll show you guys how to rig up though. Uh, whatever your choice floral is, I use blood run 20 pound. Then I use two hooks. I use a skeena hook to snell on for the bait and then I use a tail out hook as a trailer. So I do a simple snell knot. You can find it all over YouTube and I do five turns exactly. And then I leave a long tag end. Um, I found that if I do more than five turns, it'll tighten up too hard on the shank. And then uh, if you get snagged or if you fight a couple fish, you won't be able to open up your loop. So five turns is good for me, and I don't think I've ever lost a fish uh, due to that snow failing. So just as simple as that, keep the back tight. And then that little five turn snow. It's going to hold your bait, so when you want to put bait on, slide that back, stick it in this loop here, and then pull that knot right up. And then I'll tie on the tail out hook on that tag end. I think it helps for sure. A lot of these fish will bite light. It's hard to believe that 20 pound fish will bite like a bluegill, but they really do. So I want to keep that, uh, trailer lead as short as possible so it's kind of awkward to get a knot on but I'll just do a little improved clinch knot down in there and then, like I said keep that lead as short as possible you don't want it dangling away from your bait that could be bad especially if the fish are stacked ideally I'd actually like that stinger a little closer but that's pretty good that is my confidence setup right there for sticking these kings I'll just stick two shot on the leader It's not a fish, there's just no, no way it's a fish. See, I'm under, I'm under wood. Oh man. And the fish is head shaking down here. This log extends. And I kept thinking it's a bobber down when I touch it. That was a disaster. At least I got my bobber back. You already know. Got one, got one, got one, got one. No way. I was totally not expecting that. Huge buck. Huge buck. Huge buck. No, 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 no. I was fishing in the most casual manner there. Totally not expecting a fish. That's the Arctic spinner for you. Oh my God. Awesome. One on the float and one on the spinner. To me, that's a perfect day. Don't need more than two fish. To me, that's a huge success. So. Oh no, 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 no. So many snags right there. So many snags right there. Did not. I think I was hooking up. I fished skein for a long time there. Got a big old shark on, look at that. 
you fish game for 30 good drifts and you kind of get the feeling that nothing's there. But uh, the spinner will make fish appear that you didn't even think were there. That's what I've always experienced. It's actually a hen. I thought it was gonna be a buck. Looks like I got her pretty good. She looks a little more seasoned. This is where you lose it. I'm just gonna beat her. Awesome bonus fish. I was so close to walking away. Come on now. Another one. Look at that. All about the spinner. Oh, all about that Arctic spinner. Unreal bite. She's almost unhooked. Ugh. Chartreuse Arctic. I'm telling you guys, if you don't believe that salmon bite, please cast this thing. Any river that gets a salmon around in Michigan, cast this thing with confidence. This is what happens. Thought I got my one lucky fish and was done. This one tops the last fish. Oh man, I'm gonna struggle to lift this one too. That's probably a 20 pounder. I mean, just the girth and the length on this fish. Such heavy fish out here and such amazing fights. And the way that they crush a spinner, uh, it's not just the fresh fish that'll do it. Uh, they'll have crush a spinner in August, September, October. Uh, these things, they've got weird instincts that'll cause them to bite. And uh, this one totally crushed it. So, super stoked about that. And uh, if this is my last fish of the day, I'll go home the happiest guy alive because what an awesome fishery we have here in Michigan. Alright guys, excuse my breath, but I want to show you guys the reality of this. Oh my goodness, 20 minutes later, we're at the top of the ridge. So as we transition into the next hole or going home, cooking these fish, whatever, just something to point out. Drenched in sweat, probably muddy, but I want to share this message with you guys. If I was to have landed that third fish, I don't think I was getting it up here. I mean, you gotta think about how you get in and out of these spots, and if you're gonna keep fish, these two fish here, maybe combined, maybe 35 pounds. Dragging them up this ridge for me, I'm pretty out of shape. What a challenge, I mean, probably 20 minutes. I worked my way up this ridge with these fish. Like I said, I am really out of shape, but something to keep in mind if you're gonna keep, you know, three or five fish. You know and you're alone think about it see if you can even get them out of there because that was no joke walking that ridge easily 20 25 minute mission there okay so we got our salmon here cleaned up and usually people's reaction to this is they're totally grossed out uh, in the comments people can't believe i'll eat the salmon because it's not orange it doesn't look like what you get from the store obviously Ideally, you keep fish caught from Lake Michigan, they'd have great orange meat, and then you'd be able to get your skein that way. But not everyone has access to a boat. Uh, and if you're gonna get skein from river fish, you may as well use the meat. So uh, one way I like to do it is make salmon patties or salmon burgers. That's what I did with the rest of this meat. But for some of these pieces, I'm gonna show you guys another way to do it that I do in the air fryer. Just a simple glazed salmon recipe. I've done it before. It's kind of like a honey garlic type glaze. You can also do one with Dijon mustard, which I think I've done in the channel in the past, and that's really good too. But I'm gonna use like a really garlic-based seasoning. Um, you can also use everything bagel, which is really, has a lot of garlic in it, uh, and some other good stuff, so. Whatever you have, really, you know, whatever your preferred seasoning is. And some soy sauce, so. I'm gonna add a bunch of that first, and then mix everything into that. So I'm gonna use olive oil just to kind of help everything mix together. I'm gonna add a bunch of brown sugar. Uh, this is all I got, so I think ideally I'd have more. I'm gonna add a bunch of honey. Sometimes it helps to warm this up beforehand. You don't want to skimp on the honey. It's one of the best parts, and that and the sugar gets all nice and caramelized if you do it in the air fryer. Toss it on. I'm just gonna add a little extra. You guys might think that everything bagel seasoning is a goofy choice for fish, but I think it's gonna be so good on this recipe. 
gonna do these 400 for about four minutes on each side. Depends how big of pieces you use. All right guys, look at that. Great way to prepare these fish. It is so good. Mm. Wow. Such an awesome meal here guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the catch and cook and enjoyed the first salmon on video. Always a huge moment for me getting my first fish of the year, so hope the footage turns out good. And just remember guys, salmon run. Please pick up your trash, be respectful of the fish, and be respectful of the other fishermen around you. Just try to have a good time of it. Let's have a nice good season, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time.